G'day mate and welcome to Oxynote Included with me, JD. So this video is going to be another quick tutorial video covering really the different plant types and food types. So I've got Devin here with me who's just been woken up once again to come help us with today's little uh, activities. So going through the different plants, now you're going to find a couple of wild plants just out there in the wild depending on your different astro types, that you can just dig up and eat. They, they have no purpose. We can't cook them in, in uh, the machines we covered in the last video. These guys, you just dig up, you eat them. So we have the uh, hexalent hexa fruit, which has a lot of rations. It's actually a really, really good plant to go and dig up. There's no point to leaving it. It won't ever... Um, it won't ever grow any larger, it can't be replanted, and if you're not careful, your hatches will eat it. Hatches are like that. Um, the other one we have is muckroot. Muckroot, it, muckroot, again, is a very, very good uh, source of calories for your duplicates. It doesn't have nearly as much calories as the hexalent fruit, but, you know, it's free food. Basically, it's free food. Uh, the next one we're going to have is mealwood. Now, mealwood is really the staple food of most colonies. Um, it's the one you really, really get into very, very early. Now, to simplify things, every single different food that you can grow has two different life cycles. It has a wild growth life cycle, and it has a domestic cycle. So a domestic cycle is one-fourth the length of the wild cycle, but also comes with a few more requirements you're going to have to fill. So in the case of... Uh, Mealwood, we can leave that out in the wild, growing anywhere, planted by pips possibly, which we'll cover in another video. Um, and they need a body temperature of 10 to 30 degrees, which is generally not too hard to hit, again, depending on your asteroid. Um, it needs any sort of air, a fairly large range for air pressure, and it needs oxygen, polluted oxygen, or carbon dioxide. Again, inside your base in the main core area, this is probably what you're going to want in the way of gases anyway. If you domesticate it, it grows in one fourth the amount of time, but it is gonna need 10 kilos of dirt per cycle. Dirt, every single resource is somewhat renewable. Some are easier to renew than others. Dirt's one of those things, you're probably gonna dig up a lot of it in the early game anyway, again, depending on asteroid. So you should be okay. Um, the next one that you'll probably find around the starting area, depending on the asteroid, um, is a bristle blossom. Now bristle blossom, does have one extra requirement is it needs light now out in the wild even if it's out in the wild it doesn't have a light source you can just come along and pop a light right above it um under uh furniture we have a ceiling light i could drop that right there and if we bring that back up we can see the lighting overlay it would be inside the lit area i only have to light the bottom tile um, even though plants are two tiles high or sometimes three tiles high, it's the bottom tile that counts. So as long as I have a ceiling light that hits that bottom tile, we're perfectly happy. Devon, go up there, go to the toilet. Go away. Um, you're not being very helpful this episode. Meanwhile, meanwhile was a much better assistant. So, um, on top of that, if you domesticate it, you need to give it 20 kilograms of water per cycle. Early game, that's very, very hard to achieve. Um, generally, I, if you're going to plant bristle blossom, even if it's just one or two, have the duplicates manually tip the water in rather than trying to irrigate it into, in it, into an irrigated farm tile. Um, later game, when you've got plenty of water and you've got a lot of things sorted out, by all means, it's not really a bad plant to domesticate. But again, it's not really that good. Um, dust caps. Dust caps are a very, very... I would even put them as a good. They're, they're a very, very, they're a very, very easy plant to um, propagate and 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 domesticate, domesticate and propagate. So, um, dust caps need carbon dioxide. They also need darkness, which is just don't put any lights anywhere near them. That's that's really hard to to fit. Carbon dioxide just means build them in a pit somewhere near the bottom of your base or um, otherwise put a wood burner or a coal generator sort of in the same area slash room and let the, the room fill up with carbon dioxide before removing the machinery. On top of that, they need 400 grams of slime per second. If you are on any map that has any decent slime biome, you're going to have kilograms and kilograms and kilograms and tons of slime. So again, very, very easy plant to domesticate. Um, I've actually run whole thousand cycle bases running on just dust caps and mushrooms because they're really, really easy to take care of. Uh, next one we're going to have is pinch of pepper uh, or uh, actually body temperature. So body temperature, we're at 10 to 30 degrees. 
The bristle blossoms opens up a little bit. It's five to thirty degrees, so a little bit, a little bit better if it's super cold. Early game, you're probably not going to have a super cold base. Uh, dust caps again open that temperature range up just a little bit further to five to thirty-five. So again, it's one of the reasons that I make these. They're fairly easy to grow. Uh, pinch of pepper. Now, pinch of pepper is not something that duplicates can eat. It is just a cooking ingredient. It is a very good at cooking ingredient. But it is a cooking cooking ingredient explicitly. So, um, temperature wise, we're at thirty five to eighty five. So it's definitely at the warmer end of things. Uh, air pressure just needs any sort of air that has any sort of pressure. Um, very very easy to hit that one. But if you domesticate it, it needs two things. It needs phosphorite and it needs polluted water thirty five kilos per cycle, which is starting to get into a lot of water. It's a lot of water every cycle. Um, so it's something you need to keep in mind. Phosphorite, you're probably going to dig up tons and tons of it. It doesn't really have much of a use. So not too bad to domesticate this one. Um, but then again, it's one of those plants that generally, I've seen a lot of players, myself included, that if I see it out in the wild, I just dig around it. I dig around it, I don't touch it, uh, and I leave it there. And occasionally later on, if it gets too cold, I'll even put some space heaters out around it. Um, just, you know, build a bit of an insulated tile around it, block it in a little bit, and um, plug in a space heater and let it go. Next one is waterweed. So waterweed is one of the new up, uh, new plants with the uh, final release of the game. It has again a very very large body temperature, 22 to 65. But its atmosphere it needs to be in some sort of water. It needs a drizzle of water over the top, same as like rice paddy would. Um, either water, salt water, or brine. So it is one of these threes, uh, three things in as its atmosphere. On top of that, it does need five kilos of salt water per cycle, which is okay, except salt water is one of those things that, the only way to renew it is from a uh, salt water geyser. So you need to find a salt water geyser to know that you have a real renewable resource of salt water to then be able to grow water weed en masse. Um, calories wise, it doesn't actually have a lot of calories, but it can be used up in the gas range um, to make more advanced food. Uh, by by doing salad wraps. So, uh, on top of that, it needs 500 grams per cycle of bleach stone. Now, bleach stone is one of those items that doesn't really have much for use. It's also one of those items that's a very very hard to get more of. Um, in fact, the only way I know to get get more of it is by using a squeaky puff, breathing in chlorine, and excreting bleach stone. So, it's not exactly something you're going to find uh, easy to get more more on the map so something you need to take into consideration with that one we have a dash of salt vine so a dash of salt vine um needs uh chlorine so it needs to be in a chlorine atmosphere i think it's the first plant no second plant that needs to be in a chlorine atmosphere um honestly if you're using rush uh, rust deoxidizers you're going to have a lot of chlorine that you can use um to get the dash of salt vines running um and it will consume the chlorine so it will actually consume the chlorine every single cycle. Uh, on top of that, it does need seven kilos of sand per cycle, which is okay because sand is, is you have a lot of it on the map. And the only thing we really use it for is in things like water sieves as a filtration material. Um, as you get up to late game, you can actually use regolith in those um, water sieves. So you can swap that out and just use sand in your dash of salt vines. On top of that, th this will give you salt, which you can then ground up and use in your mess tables uh, to increase the quality of food as well. We have the nauseous sprout. So the nauseous sprout is again one added just with the final release of the game. Its body temperature is minus 25 to zero. So a little bit awkward uh, to grow. On top of that, it needs five kilos of dirt per cycle. We covered the dirt with the mealwood. It's not too hard to get. You can make more of it uh, via pips, so it's not too bad. But it also requires 20 kilograms of ethanol per cycle. So ethanol ethanol does go down to an, a, a very low negative temperature um, before it freezes. So, you know, it's not that too hard, uh, not that hard to get. But it is going to require a lot of infrastructure to get your nauseous sprouts running to make ethanol from lumber which we'll cover shortly to then pump it into these guys and and lose 20 kilos per cycle for each plant don't forget you're also going to have have to have 21 cycles worth of growth before you get um before you get any uh crops out of this uh particular plant it does give you 12 crop uh 12 beans per harvest so there is a significant amount of beans per harvest 
um, if we go back to dust caps or something, um, it, it'll give you a single mushroom at 2,400 calories. Uh, pinch of pepper, it'll give you 400 grams, which is generally four serves um, when it comes to one of your different uh, cooking machines. So, you know, it's something you've got to keep in mind as well. But that is a lot of ethanol per cycle when it comes to the nosh sprout. Finally, we have the sleet wheat. Now, sleet wheat is... It's been around for a very long time, and honestly, it's one of those ones that mo when most people see them out in the cold biomes, they intentionally dig around them so they can leave them naturally growing because they're fairly hard to grow. Um, not only does their body temperature need to be between minus 55 and 5 degrees, which is very, very hard to hit to, st to start with. On top of that, it needs 5 kilograms of dirt per cycle, which is not that bad, but it also needs 20 kilograms of water per cycle. And you've got to remember, water freezes at about 0 degrees Celsius. So that only gives you a 5 degree window to get your water into these plants um, without, their, without the water in the pipes freezing and not overheating the plants. So it's, it's a very difficult plant to grow. Um, same with the uh, pinch of pepper and the nosh sprout. Actually gives you 18 sleet wheat grain per harvest. So it does take 18 cycles, but then you get 18 sleet wheat grain. You can use those 18 grains to then go plant 18 more plants. So it is it's very, very quick to uh, repropagate if you just choose to domesticate it. So that's really all our cooking plants now on top of that we have a couple of really utilitarian plants uh we'll start this end so this is a weaswort weaswort same as all the um the actual the actual edible plants um all these plants also have a domestic a domestic cycle and a wild growth cycle so the wild is either four times longer or 25 uh, percent as effective so with what just cools down the local area um it'll actually bring in uh any gas that's below it below it any gas that's below it and push it out the top at a colder temperature so this is a, again fairly easy one to hit you know it's happy anywhere between uh, minus 60 and 95 degrees so it has a very large area that you can plant it in but it does need that phosphorite 400 grams per cycle um, to get 100% throughput. You can just hopefully domesticate four of them in the same area uh, or hopefully have four of them wild in the same area via pips, um, which can be done, hopefully. Yeah. Come back in a couple of days and watch the pip video or come or, or look, click the subscribe button, turn on the notifications. When you see that pip video that, I, that will be coming out in the next couple of days, um, go watch it. It will really cover very easily how you can domesticate pips and have them grow the plants where you want the plants to be. So, um, Weaswort used to be used extensively through base cooling because you could just pop them anywhere. They didn't have a fertilizer requirement and they just had 100% throughput all the time. Now that they need that phosphorite, it also means a duplicate every single cycle has to come deliver some sort of fertilizer to it. So they're not nearly as effective as they used to be. Uh, Oxyfern, again, one of those plants is brand new with um, the full release of Oxynot included. You've probably seen these around either your base or other bases you've seen it, uh, on the internet already. So these have a, f a somewhat restrictive body temperature, zero to 40 degrees. Uh, their air pressure is, is again, a really, really easy one to hit, but they do need to live in carbon dioxide. So it generally means right at the bottom of the base is where you want to grow them. Um, they need dirt, not a lot of dirt. They're perfectly fine. But if they are domesticated, they need 19 kilograms of water per cycle. Now, there are some maps where this is really the only choice you have for oxygen for the first 10 or so cycles. So these can be very, very important to actually domesticate. There are other maps where you can pretty much ignore these guys. Um, it's really, really up to you and which sort of map you're on and how desperate your oxygen is uh, already. In saying that, that's a lot of water. Had you run that, uh, that water through a... Uh, a electrolyzer you get a lot more oxygen out of it than than using an oxyphone um so it is something you can take into consideration wild they are absolutely brilliant um because you can just leave them alone and they'll just work next one we have is the arbitrary so the arbitrary again has a fairly easy hit body temperature uh, when domesticated, they require dirt per cycle. They also require 70 kilograms of polluted water, which is a lot of polluted water. Um, in the case of the arbitrary, it's a little bit unique that after its growth cycle 
it becomes a tree and then every every additional growth cycle it grows a new branch so if we go over to the harvest window uh we can't see it because it hasn't finished growing yet because it's stifled but you can actually have like i think it's five branches off this now it's changed a couple of times during during the um the beta gameplay so uh each branch makes 300 uh, kilograms of lumber so this is your lumber source here which of course we can use to burn or we can also use at the same time to um turn an ethanol so this is your one source of, of ethanol being that they need 70 kilograms of polluted water per cycle i would strongly recommend that you keep these as wild as often as possible um next one is a balm lily now balm lily has been one of my favorite plants for a very very long time they're actually the number one plant i feed to my drekos because drekos are happy to eat them and more importantly they require absolutely zero duplicate interaction and they don't cost me anything per cycle so when i when they planted wild um which is perfectly fine by me um it's 35 to 85 degrees celsius so very very large temperature range they just need to live in chlorine and that's it if i domesticate them by just putting them in a farm tile of any sort it brings the life cycle down to 12 and dracos eat them so I can literally have a, a Dreco tank that I, I keep, or a Dreco hatchery, a Dreco ranch that I keep all my Drecos in. And I will just fill out all the ground tiles with uh, planet, planet tiles and a whacking barn lily. Because it's easy, it feeds the Drecos, it requires no dupe, uh, no dupe interaction. And on top of that, if I choose to go in there and actually harvest some of the plants, I can use them um, in the medical center or in the medical branch to to create different potions to hopefully heal up my dupes if i happen to you know poison them or something like that uh next one we actually have is thimble reed now thimble reed is going to be a fairly important plant to find around the map um they have a fairly quick uh wild life cycle and generally again if i find them and i can avoid digging them up i will uh because they need 160 kilograms per cycle of uh, polluted water. So if you run yourself into a situation where you have far too much polluted water, and, and that's the really thing that, that's that's causing you hassles, then I've seen a lot of players, and myself included, on their polluted water tank, they'll actually put an overflow section and just run that into one, two, 10, whatever it happens to be, thimble reed plants, um, because they just absorb all the polluted water you can throw at them, and they will give you thimble reed. Now, thimble reed is gonna be um, very important for clothing. So that is, uh, well, they give you reed fiber, rather. Uh, very important for your clothing, which is your Atmos suits, your your, uh, your jetpack suits, your standard clothing that you might need for any of your duplicates, or you might want for any of your duplicates, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's one plant I, I definitely leave uh, out in the wild, and I will domesticate it basically to chew up any excess water I have because they are just so effective at drinking polluted water. Um, the last one we have is gas grass. Now this is probably one you haven't seen around the map. Um, this is one you can only get from space. So you need to get them from space, bring them back on a rocket ship, um, along with they actually have a creature or a, a critter that they pair up with. And this is their only use in, in life. Um, they need 500, 500 grams per cycle of chlorine if you domesticate them. If you can convince a, a pip to go out and plant them wild, that's all well and good. They also require 2,000 lux of light. So that's actually a significant amount of light. It's not something you're going to find with a plain old simple bulb. Will you tell me how much lux you put out? Uh, nope, you won't. Uh... You won't either. Um, basically, either you need a lot of shine bugs, like a lot, a lot of shine bugs um, to give you 2,000 lux, or oh, sorry, 20,000 lux, or you need to go put them out in space with a glass ceiling of some sort so they can get that light in to grow these particular plants. Um, so these are all spots where we can get food, including Mr. Hatch down here. Um, these are all really utilitarian plants. In saying that, there, there is quite a few spots where we can get meat from um, both our hatch our stone hatch our slick star molten slick star uh Chavol, the drecos um the royal bugs the pip uh, i actually forgot uh puffs puffs as well all these guys are sources of potential sources of meat um 
Most of them put out one or two kilos worth of meat. There are some exceptions, like the Cheval puts out 10 kilograms worth of meat, so they, they actually have a, a, a lot higher... Um, a lot higher meat output uh, for that particular critter. Um, same with, I think... I think the puff puts out one kilo, whereas a hatch puts out two kilos. So these are all very, very good sources of meat. We also have our fish that put out um, the, uh, the the paku fillet, I think they're called now. Um, fish are only really our three choices. The gulp fish, the paku itself, and the tropical paku. All these guys can also turn into meat as well, um, or the fish form of meat. Uh, finally, we have the gassy moo. So the gassy moo is that creature that can only come from space. Um, the gassy moo eats the gas grass, which we had over here. This is its only source of food, and it actually excretes uh, natural gas. So there's something to keep in mind that if you get out to space and you need more natural gas to make more power, gassy moos are a way to go if you can farm up the plants and get the gassy moos down here. They're a little bit tricky, but can be worth the time. Finally, we have our last set of plants. Um, there's only really five in this category, and these are all decor plants. So if we go over to our decor overlay, um, we can see that we have, you know, some of these are very, very good. Some of these are very, very bad. So we're going to start with uh, the bluff. So the bluff just puts out a decor of 25. Um, these are all in the furniture tab. So we have the flower pot. We have a wall pot, which I can't put anywhere because it needs a two tile to sit on. Uh, where are we? Furniture, wall pot. Rotate that way. So I have a wall pot there. Um, we also have a hanging pot variant and an aero pot variant if you happen to make it out of glass. Um, these are just all decor plants. So we have the bluff, which puts out a decor of 25, which is a good amount of decor. It's also the more than enough decor to actually convert your uh, mess hall into a great hall. So this is actually the quickest way to get up to a, gr a great hall now. Just put in a single plant with a, a single flower pot with a single uh, bluff in there. Our next one is a buddy bud. Now a buddy bud actually has a decor of 15, which is not nearly as good as um, the bluff that we already probably had access to. The one advantage you have of a buddy bud is a buddy bud actually puts out this floral scent. So these floral scents, if a duplicate breeds them in, and is not allergic, that is a big proviso, and is not allergic, they'll actually get a stress debuff from the floral scents. So that is something you need to keep in mind. On top of that, as you can see, I have two different types of germs right here. Germs, only one sort of germ can occupy a tile at any one time. So if you have a lot of slime lung around your base, or you have a slime biome you're about to dig into, populating the area with buddy buds beforehand and letting those floral scents um, spread out can actually block back slime lung and stop slime lung infecting your base so buddy buds is one of those things that i have been plopping around my base around the outside around the inside um to get that debuff and at the same time stop any slime lung getting into the base the next one we have is mirth leaf mirth leaf again just has a decor bonus of 25 we have the jumping joya decor bonus of, uh, of 25 um as you can see our temperature range goes up on each one of these as we get to you know higher higher versions of um our little decor plants just in case you're having like heat problems in around your base um and in the case of mirth leaf like the, it's happy in sort of any sort of environment um whereas most of the other ones are just limited to your oxygen blue oxygen and carbon dioxide um jumping joy out can be really really good in your uh industrial areas because of it's a much higher body temperature um i've had different areas where the dupes are in atmos suits so they don't really care but normally no plant would grow in that environment. Jumpy Joy is more than happy. Last one we have is a Sporchid. Sporchid. Um, which honestly you don't ever want to grow. Um, they do have a decor radius of plus 80. But they host a, a really, really nasty zombie spores. Now zombie spores, if your duplicates get infected, which they will fairly quickly... Um, actually gives a minus 10 to every single du duplicate stat and skill. So 
it does a pretty good job of either disabling your dupes or killing your dupes off fairly quickly. But it does come with a pretty decor bonus of plus 80. So if you can contain these things in a corner of your base where everybody can see them through glass tiles, but they can never, ever, ever, ever interact with the atmosphere, then they can be a bonus. It's something you can maybe look at as you get more experience with oxygen not included. But that is it for our sort of plants and our different spots where we can get meat uh, to feed our duplicates. Um, that's really it for this video. I hope you guys have found it helpful as always. If you did, click the like button. If you also at the same time want to catch up with that PIP video, by all means, click the subscribe button right now. Come back in the next couple of days and you can catch that PIP video, which will cover how we can get a lot of these plants actually growing in the wild very quickly and very easy, uh, easily. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.